Hey everybody, Steve here at Holy Cross Cemetery in Culver City, California. And I'm back today to finish a video that I started about four or five months ago. I think it was a month or two before I uh, left on my road trip this summer. I came to the cemetery here to visit the gravesite of Lawrence Welk, visited his grave, took some pictures, actually did some videos, got home and the videos weren't there. And I usually will do everything in duplicate just to make sure that I have photos and videos because it's a very long drive. It's about a three to four hour drive to get here to the cemetery. So whenever I'm driving a long distance, especially, I do backups, but for whatever reason, those videos, they weren't there on either phone. Thanks for joining me on another trip to visit the most memorable cemeteries, memorials, and grave sites. Hopefully today I'll have better luck. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Lawrence Welk, he was an accordionist and a big band leader who had a very popular TV music variety show that was on the air for more than 30 years, from 1951 to 1982, and it was called The Lawrence Welk Show. His band was called the Champagne Music Makers because they specialized in light and bubbly dance music. It was a very wholesome show that most parents and grandparents loved. As a kid growing up back in the 60s, I was much more interested in the Beatles and the Beach Boys and Motown music. But now that I'm their age, I can look back and appreciate it. And it also brings back many wonderful memories of the many Saturday nights I spent watching the show with my grandparents and family. So how about you? Did you also watch the show with your grandparents? Welk died at the age of 89 in Santa Monica, California on May 17th, 1992. To find his gravesite, you enter through the front gates of the cemetery, head up the hill to the mausoleum, and you'll find him in section Y, just past the mausoleum, to the right. His Find a Grave memorial page does have a GPS, but it still took me forever to find it the first time. Over the years, the show featured dozens and dozens of cast members and special guest stars. I'm happy to report that some of them, like the Lennon sisters, are still alive. But sadly, many of those who are no longer with us have been cremated and their ashes have been scattered or the whereabouts of their final resting places is unknown. But I have been able to find and visit a few of them, so keep watching if you're curious and want to see who you remember. Henry Cuesta was a clarinet and saxophone player who appeared on the show from 1972 to 1982. He's laid to rest here at Woodlawn Cemetery in Santa Monica, California. His grave site is located just inside the second entrance gate, north of Pico Boulevard on 14th Street. It's in the section to the right after you enter the gates, just a couple of rows from the curb. I'll pan around here so you can get a better idea of the location. Cuesta died from cancer at the age of 71 in Sherman Oaks, California on December 17, 2003. In addition to Welk, he also played with Jack Teagarden, Bob Crosby, Mel Torme, and many other performers during his career. Over the years, his headstone has become tarnished and is difficult to read, but it does have a nice epitaph, so I'll read it to you. It reads, applause. No tears, please. I had a great show. Who could ask for more than that? Aladdin Palante appeared on The Lawrence Welk Show from 1955 to 1967. He's laid to rest here at Valhalla Cemetery in North Hollywood. He was cremated and his ashes are interred in the Garden of Rest Urn Garden. There are a few urn gardens here in the cemetery, but as you enter through the gates and make a right-hand turn, the Garden of Rest Urn Garden will be the first one you come to on the right. An actor and a violinist, his stage name was simply his first name, Aladdin which is a pretty cool and attention-getting and memorable stage name. He died at the relatively young age of 57 from a heart attack in Van Nuys, California on June 9, 1970. So do you remember Aladdin from the Lawrence Welk Show? There were so many entertainers and musicians on the show. Over the many years it was on TV, it's hard to remember everyone, but I'm sure everybody has a favorite. So I've just been searching for as many of their grave sites as I can find and surprisingly so many of them have grave sites that are unknown. No one even knows where they are. Big Tiny Little, Bob Lido, Charlie Parlato, Jimmy Roberts, 
and Jerry Burke all have find a grave memorial pages that say their final resting places are unknown. And for quite a few of them, I couldn't even find a find a grave memorial page. And then there are others who were cremated and their ashes were scattered or given to family and friends, and they also have no final resting place to visit. They include Johnny Klein, Natalie Nevins, Myron Florin, and probably many others that I'm not even aware of. Of all the performers who appeared on the show, the two I remember the most were my two favorites, the Lennon Sisters and the Mills Brothers. The Lennon Sisters were regulars on the show, while the Mills Brothers were occasional guest stars. I still listen to the Mills Brothers on the radio almost every week on my local oldies radio station, and I never get tired of hearing their songs. And I was very happy when I discovered that two of the four Mills Brothers are laid to rest right here in Southern California at Forest Lawn in the Hollywood Hills. And they're both interred here at the Court of Remembrance Outdoor Mausoleum. Harry is in a crypt and his brother Donald was cremated and is nearby in the columbarium of Radiant Dawn. Their father John was a barber and had his own barbershop quartet and that's how they got their start. Their first recording in the early 1930s was Tiger Rag and it became a national number one hit, selling more than a million copies and earning them a gold disc. According to their Wikipedia page, they recorded more than 2,000 songs, sold more than 50 million copies, and received at least three dozen gold records or discs. They were also the first African-American artists to have a number one hit on the Billboard music charts. Cab Driver is my favorite Mills Brothers song, but I also love Glow Worm, Lazy River, Paper Doll, and so many others. And they all bring back great memories of my grandparents. How about you? Do you have a favorite Mills Brothers song? I wasn't able to find a cause of death, but Harry Mills died in Los Angeles at the age of 68 on June 28, 1982. Now let's walk over to the adjacent courtyard and I'll show you where his brother Donald is interred. His columbarium is located in this courtyard straight ahead in the right hand corner. If you look to the right, you'll also see Liberace's crypt on the same wall. To find Donald's niche, you walk through the archway of the columbarium of Radiant Dawn and walk straight ahead to the wall that you're facing. And his niche is located seven rows up from the bottom and five columns over from the wall on the right. Donald died at the age of 84 from pneumonia on November 13, 1999 in Los Angeles. Brian Dorn sent me this photo from his visit to the gravesite of Jules and Lois Herman. Jules Herman played first trumpet for Lawrence Welk in the 1930s, and Lois Herman, who was a singer, became Welk's original champagne lady. Jules lived to the age of 93, and Lois lived to the age of 97 or 98, according to her Find a Grave Memorial page. They're laid to rest at Acacia Park Cemetery in Mendota Heights, Minnesota. Thanks for sharing their gravesite with us, Brian. Wayne Hairston sent me this photo from his visit to the gravesite of legendary drummer, composer, and band leader Gene Krupa. I don't know if he ever played or appeared with Lawrence Welk, but since they were both band leaders and contemporaries, I thought this would be a good time to share this visit to his gravesite as well. Krupa died from heart failure at the age of 64 in Yonkers, New York on October 16, 1973. Like Welk, he's also buried in a Holy Cross Cemetery, only this one is located in Calumet City, Illinois. Thanks, Wayne, for sharing this photo with us. And this week, I'd like to thank my latest Patreon supporter, Dr. Leon Roberts. Thank you, Dr. Roberts, for supporting this channel. Also, if any of you have visited the grave sites of any of the performers who appeared on the show and who I haven't yet visited, Please feel free to send me your photos and videos if you'd like me to share them in upcoming vlogs. So thanks for joining me today, and if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy these too. And if you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to do that, and click the bell icon if you want to be notified the next time I upload a video like this one. So until next time, thanks for sharing the memories everyone.